So, hi, my name is Mark Azarovic. I'm working at the Institute for Emergency Medicine at the University Hospital in Munich. What I'm doing there is leading the Simulation and Training Center. Currently, I'm also the president of the European Society for Simulation, CESA. My background is twofold in medicine and in computer science, and this will become somewhat important as you'll see during the presentation. What I'm going to talk now about is the journey of a simulation and training center throughout the years and how we adapted to the changes in the environment. For starters, the question is why do we need a training and simulation center? Because education has been done for many years in a so-called traditional way. We have been teaching theoretical concepts like this, in a crowded auditorium. We have been teaching bedside, kind of like this, with many students around the patient. But here you can see some problems, because if you are looking at these persons in the background, the question is, how much do they see? How much do they learn? How did we teach skills in the traditional way? Well, we used very simple simulators or we used um, simulated patients like the one in the picture on the right to train interactions with with real patients or we just watched our colleagues performing some skills some operations and here you see another problem because these guys are surgeons or are going to become surgeons Surgery is a very manual skill, but their hands are not moving, they're just watching. So the traditional way of teaching is lacking the last mile of interactivity in order to be able to train people for the job. And this is where simulation comes in and why we need simulation. And what we can do with simulation is a very broad range of teaching. We can teach skills and individual abilities, and we can do team training and team management. For skills, there are a lot of pretty simple skill trainers. For team management, you need a complex environment where you can put a whole team in that environment, in their real roles, and have them act and train. And you can obviously combine both, having a complex skill trainer in a real environment where people are in the realistic roles and get trained. For whom is this type of training? Well, there are several target groups. First of all, there are students, and then there are nurses or paramedics or other uh, allied healthcare professions in training. Then there are young doctors, but most importantly, it is about interprofessional training. Simulation is very strong in training people, in working in teams and interacting in teams. Because we know from a lot of research that in any complex environment, and modern medicine is certainly a complex environment, Problems and errors do not happen because people don't know things or are unable to do a skill. It is because we have a messy, real environment, we have a complex environment, we have a team to manage, and above all, we have to communicate in that team. And these aspects make up, literature says, usually 70% of all problems that we encounter. And here comes a new concept, which simulation is very strong at teaching. And the concept is called crisis or crew resource management or CRM. And it's based on five pillars. The central one is communication, but then we have decision-making, we have managerial skills, we have situational awareness and we have teamwork. And this is something that we can very well teach with simulation in simulation and training centers. An important aspect to notice though, is that CRM alone is not so helpful. You need to know your medicine as well. 
And that's where um, the colleague Markus Rall from Tübingen has created the analogy to Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex is a modern multi-layered fabric and this is how medical knowledge and CRM work together. Because what we want is a good outcome for our patients. What we have is medical knowledge and expertise. And that usually helps us to achieve a good outcome. But then errors occur or problems appear or something unexpected happens. And this is where CRM helps us to stay on track and to get to that good outcome. So with this in mind, many years ago, we designed a SIM center that would cover all aspects of acute care medicine from the pre-hospital area through transport phase into a clinical environment. And we were able to train a lot of healthcare professionals in the aspects we just discussed. Our whole curriculum is based around patient safety, but comprises a lot more like normal SIM courses, instructor courses, uh, show area, human factor courses, and all of this aimed at establishing patient safety. And this is where a very nice success story ends. Or does it? Because we're living in a changing world, we're living in a changing environment, and we had to adapt. What happened over the years is that the real working environment of people was emphasized more and more. Financial models changed, so we had less courses in our SIM center and more so-called in situ courses where we went out to a real hospital to do courses. And we had a very nice SIM center, most of the time empty. So we needed to adapt. We made some changes and developed a research area in that same SIM center and starting doing some interesting projects. The first project we did was developing a surgical simulator. Well, we started using haptical devices like these here, but soon realized that was not good enough for the surgery we wanted to represent. So we went on to the version two using 3D printing based on real patient data and allowing surgeons to perform the operation called vertebroplasty, radiation free and using digitally reconstructed radiology images. This project coagulated a very good team of researchers and with this team we went on to do the next project which is almost science fiction in the description it's a consortium of the Bose universities in Munich and some uh, commercial companies around it. The idea of this project is to have telepresence for experts. So you have an expert somewhere in a remote place and he can help healthcare practitioners on site. We had to change our SIM center to add a lot of technology in order to be able to recreate the environment in the virtual world and allow the expert to be immersed in that virtual world and interact with the local practitioners. And just to demonstrate very briefly how this is looking like, I have a video from our booth at Medica where you can see the local practitioner wearing a HoloLens, seeing the virtual expert in that lens. And the expert is well, he could be anywhere. In this booth, he was just across uh, the wall, but um, the only connection between them is the internet, and the expert is fully immersed in a reconstructed environment on the fly, and they can interact as if they would be close to one another. And this is indeed a very successful project, and I'm happy to be able to report on how we changed our focus due to external constraints from pure team training to research area and doing very interesting projects. And I'm happy to 
hear any comments or questions from you, um, you can find our institute and me personally on LinkedIn and I'm happy to be contacted at any point. Thank you.